welcome to the next weekly episodic. This is actually the 10th show. We've made it to the magic number 10 of the sports entertainment show featuring Jason Miller. And right now, I'm not going to do a regular Raw rundown, okay? I will be the first to admit that was a very, very bad edition of Raw. Now, the thing that bothers me is the internet wrestling community. I'm going to come down on you and I will come down on you hard right now, okay? Everybody wanted Brock Lesnar to win this. Everybody wanted him, and now they want to complain. Oh, man, I couldn't even get through those three hours. I actually saw a post from someone that said that was the worst edition of Raw that they have seen since they've, started, since they've watched Raw for the last 15 years or whatever. Are, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Do, do, you, do you folks remember three years ago in the Miz era? Yeah, Miz was your champion for an extended period of time, actually. That was a joke. The talent on the roster right now, and storylines even, are way more compelling than they used to be. I mean, come on. If you don't see that, you, you gotta stop being stupid. Internet wrestling community, you gotta be stop being stupid because, here's the deal, the guy that's running the show is Vince McMahon. Everything else that's going on around him, he can hire and fire anybody he wants to. The, the final call comes down to Vince. And you don't want this stuff out there so that he can actually, so, that, so the information comes back to Vince and then he goes radical and changes something. You don't want Seth Rollins cashing in at Night of Champions. You don't want that. I'm telling you, you have to watch what you say because if he thinks that you're not, if you're this, this unhappy with the product, he will, he will drastically change things. Okay? Yes, that was, a, that was a horrible edition of Raw, but the actual programming, there's a lot of stuff that's wrong, okay? I mean, for instance, Triple H has to stop getting over on everybody. The, the verbal jabbing that he had, jarring, whatever you want to say, with, with Jericho last week, it's fun, but Jericho needs to get the last laugh, not Triple H. And I think that's the problem with Triple H being the head of creative. He doesn't want to make himself look bad. Unfortunately, he's going to, I mean, and sometimes he does a good job. I mean, he's, especially the, the, the slapping and taking the, you know, the hits from the, from the women. He, he's selling that very well. But he needs to look worse at times. If you're going to be that authority figure, then you have to look worse than what, you, what he has done. I think that's one thing. Now, Stephanie's the best part of, of that whole authority thing. She, she's... She's knocked it out of the park every week, but uh, I like the tease that she had with AJ, and I think that's a program in the future that actually has legs. And I wonder, where, cause, because of the, where they're looking that they're going right now, it looks like it's going to be a four-way for the Divas Championship at uh, Night of Champions, and I think that's probably because they know the Brias can't, the, that the Bellas, the Brias, the Bellas can't handle this. They're, they're not going to be able to handle that match all by themselves, and I have no idea who in creative thought that they were going to be able to carry that show because they're not even going to come close. They're not even going to be able to come close to, 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 to carrying this program the way they thought. And I guess it's all about Total Divas. And if you look at the ratings, uh, you know, a quarter of the people that watch Raw are watching Total Divas. So why are you so worried about it? Why? I mean, there's there's a niche market for Div for, for Total Divas to try to get some of the... Uh, <clears throat> some of the audience who may not be mainstream wrestling fans to get involved in the wrestling. I get it. I'm not a big reality show because all reality shows are fake and <laughs> Total Divas is beyond fake. I mean, I, I trust me. I watched like the first two episodes and I'm like, enough of this. This is not this is not genuine at all. And and, and, it, and it's funny how I, I think the, the biggest mistake right now that the WWE is making is, is, is that they're treating their fans like it's 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 still the 90s i think at times they're not they don't think storylines through because if you're gonna have nikki bella be this ultimate heel then she but then on total divas she's john cena's boyfriend that doesn't work it doesn't work and um like big show and mark henry getting along like they've been bras their whole life that's a joke too i i mean you can't just sweep everything that happened in the past and just for, pretend that it didn't happen and that's what they tend to do. They have selective memory on what they want to talk about. And I think that's the, the storyline issues that they have. Um, but, oh, but again, like I said, my main rant about everything here go, boils down to the internet wrestling community. Because you are so upset at the lack of mid-card storylines. And they're actually trying, okay? The storylines aren't fantastic. I, I get that. But... You have a champion who's going to be there once a month. That's all he's going to do. 
okay? You're only going to see him on TV once a month, so you can't complain about the about John Cena looking like this Superman in every main event because they have to do that. That is the storyline that they've chosen because John Cena got housed at the last pay-per-view. So in order for him to, to look like a threat to Brock Lesnar, he's got to be Super Cena. And I know everybody hates Super Cena, but he's got to be to make it look like he has a chance against Brock in the next program forward. And, and if you're going to say, well, I don't want John Cena in the main event anymore, who's going to go? Who's it going to be? I mean, come on. That's, see, that's what I'm saying. You, you can't have it both ways. You have to show patience. They're trying to get the mid-card into, into a situation where they can push somebody else. I mean, right now, if, like, seriously, let's say, you know, where does it go after Night of Champions, okay? For, because if, if the John Cena and Brock Lesnar storyline is done, and it, it could be, it might not be, I have no idea. But let's say it's done, just for the sake of this argument, it's done. Where do you go with Brock Lesnar for Hell in a Cell? Right now, you have no idea. Right now, you're thinking, my God, he's right. There's nowhere to go. Because there isn't. There is not anybody on the roster who is in a position who is strong enough to even look like they could, they could have a match with Brock Lesnar. And that's why you have to have patience. Yes, last week's Raw was bad. It was really bad. It was probably one of the worst of the year. I'll admit that. But you kind of have to take two steps forward before you, you take one step Wait, two steps back before you take one step forward, okay? And that's what you need to understand. It's not near as bad as you think it is, okay? Um, honestly, I think one of the biggest glaring issues for me is, is that I miss Ambrose. When Ambrose isn't on TV and I, he's not coming, you know what I mean? And you know, like, you can go through the first half of Raw like, well, at least I haven't seen Ambrose yet. But when you know the whole time in a whole episode that Ambrose isn't going to be there, then sometimes it's a struggle. Ah uh, yes, another change of venue, but yes, um, there, there's the, the the thing I'm trying to say is that there's there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, I know they're mishandling the Wyatts. Uh, it seems like the Wyatts haven't won a match that's meaningful in a long time. Uh, I, I think there's a good chance that going into Monday night, this Monday night with. Um, Bray and Jericho's steel cage, that this is going to change the momentum and they're going to start going off. I can't believe that WWE has wasted the Wyatts they have in the, like the way they have in the past month, but they can regroup it and they can, it, it's not always lost, you know what I mean? It's not like they become complete jobbers or anything. So I, I, I think that it's going to start on Sunday where the Wyatts become back into prominence. And uh, I, I want the mid card titles to look like something. Uh, I mean, you know, Sheamus having a belt seems so senseless because you barely see him and he's barely talked about. Um, I think that him and Cesaro can possibly steal the show at Night of Champions. And when that match happens, I think, again, it's going to bring some prestige. And I think it's, it's, there is things that are happening that are in the right direction. I wouldn't freak out the way... Everybody is, especially this past week where I've seen all kinds of stuff. Remember, this is what you wanted. You wanted you wanted Brock to have that belt, and you're asking for a part-time player to carry the company. That's what you're asking. That's what you're asking. So you, you can't you can't come down on WWE when 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 the, the it's not as exciting for you. And let me tell you, the NXT takeover show is next Thursday, Thursday the eleventh. That is going to be fantastic. That's when they're going to introduce Kenta. There's all kinds of talent to be excited about. I cannot wait for three years from now. When I think of the talent that's already in the WWE, plus some of the stuff that's down there, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. You just have to show patience. Now, that pretty much covers all that I wanted to talk about with the actually wrestling aspect of it. Now let me go off on another rant on CM Punk. Okay, just saw the whole, um, you know, the 22-page letter that, you know, basically they're suing WWE over the likenesses of CM Punk's character, and of course they want royalties. You quit, okay? You didn't retire. You didn't retire, okay? There's a difference between saying, I'm retiring and I'm quitting because I don't, I'm, I'm taking my ball and going home because I don't like what you're doing with my character, and he did the latter, all right? He does not deserve anything, and I hope he doesn't win. Again, he owns the rights to this stuff, so maybe he will. Okay, I'm not, 
you know, I, I'm not David Atunga, for lack of a better term. I know that's not real. I, I'm just saying I, I'm not a real attorney. I have no idea what the law says, but there's no way that CM Punk deserves anything right now. I mean, at least, especially with the video game, because I know a lot of it has to revolves around the video game. Well, that was being made while he was still with the company. So you can't come later on and say, I want my money because you're using my character. I don't want to hear it. You were supposed to be there, right? I mean, starting next year when that stuff happens, then I'm okay with it if, 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 you know, if there's lawsuits and stuff like that. But right now, I don't want CM Punk to win anything. The only thing that I'm concerned about is that the WWE comes down on AJ because I think AJ is probably the brightest spot that there is in the Diva division right now. And I don't want her to go away because, my God, and any more Bellas, I'm going to rip my ears out. So, or tear out my eyes, I guess. Both. They're, they're, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see them. Anyway, so, I mean, that's it. Right now, I guess September 21st, something like that, is when Night of Champions is. I still have high, aspe high, high aspirations for that show. I think it's going to be pretty good. So, I wouldn't fret yet, okay? But if, if, if anybody watching this video can do one thing for me, you got to relax because I don't want... I don't want the higher ups to get the idea that you as a collective unit, IWC, is this unhappy with the product because it could really go off this kilter. It, I mean, it could go nuts. It's happened before. Don't think it can. All right, so. Uh, oh, actually, one other thing. Michael Sam. That was ridiculous. If there's anything that you want to complain to the WWE about, it was Michael Sam, because that was just a complete publicity stunt. There was no way he was going to go and be on Raw. They just wanted to hear their name on CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox Sports, and everything else. They just wanted to make sure that their name was out. That shameless promotion, WWE, you don't have to do that. You're better than that. That's all. So I'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.